the art and science of developing safe new crop varieties. Many plant species that we depend on for food produce toxins. By choosing and breeding individual plants that lack the genes for producing toxins, selective breeding has created countless crop varieties that are safe to eat. In a recent paper, Natalie Kaiser from Michigan State University and her collaborators review strategies used by breeders to ensure the safety of selectively bred crops. As described in their paper, crops can be broadly categorized into those that don't produce any serious toxins and those with known toxins. In the latter category, safety depends on several factors, including how long the crop has been consumed safely, breeding strategies used to select plants with low toxin levels, and preparation methods that ensure safe consumption. Common foods that produce toxins include celery, potato and rapeseed. The process of selectively breeding new varieties of these crops is similar to that used for crops that don't produce toxins. In this practice, parental plants with desirable characteristics are bred together to produce offspring with new combinations of desirable traits. However, for toxin-producing crops, breeders closely monitor toxin levels during the process. In the few cases where new varieties have posed safety risks, the crop species were already known to be capable of toxin production. Kaiser found that there are no documented examples where selective breeding led to new toxins being produced. This is because selective breeding shuffles genes from the parent plants, but does not give rise to new genes for producing new toxins. Therefore, breeders can refine their practices based on known toxins in a given species. Understanding the chemistry within the edible part of a crop is vital for developing safe varieties. For example, fruits with the Rosaceae family, including apples, almonds and apricots, produce a compound called amygdalin within their seeds that causes cyanide poisoning if eaten in large amounts. Since the consumed portion of almonds is the seed, the amygdalin levels of new almond varieties must be measured. In contrast, apple seeds are rarely eaten in sufficient quantities to pose health risks. Kaiser explains that expanding crops into new markets may depend on breeding efforts aimed at reducing toxins. For instance, apricot seeds provide a source of dietary fiber and oils, but their use of human consumption is limited by the lack of varieties with low amygdalin levels. For example, grass pea is a staple food in South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa that excels in the harsh climates of these regions. However, it produces toxins that can cause neurological conditions. Researchers discovered genetic variation in the genes that control toxin production in this crop, enabling breeders to develop low-toxin varieties. Identifying the genetics behind plant traits allow breeders to streamline the breeding process by choosing parents with desired genes, even when the traits are visually indistinct. Additionally, broadly characterizing the genetics of crop species provides breeders with new targets for their breeding efforts. Alongside selective breeding, Kaiser suggests that harnessing genetics may become increasingly important to ensuring food security and safety in future. For further information, you can connect with Natalie Kaiser at kirkweiler at msu.edu or on Twitter, nkaiserscience.